Earth's seascapes are ever-changing. Over millions of years, many processes have shaped our oceans to become what we know them as today. Modern seas are teeming with a wide variety of organisms, but this was not always the case. Let's head back in time and take a look. An interval of time in Earth's distant past, known as the Ediacaran period, began 635 million years ago. During this time, the oceans were murky, with much lower oxygen levels, and the sea floor was carpeted by gelatinous microbial mats. The oceans were dominated by cyanobacteria and strange, small, multicellular organisms, which were beginning to appear for the very first time. Towards the end of the Ediacaran period, about 575 million years ago, an important evolutionary radiation event occurred, which saw a rapid increase in organism diversity. This event, known as the Avalon Explosion, saw a sudden transition from microscopic organisms to larger, more complex multicellular organisms, coming in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, and in some cases, containing a digestive tract. This transition was facilitated by changes in the chemical composition of ocean waters. Prior to and during the Avalon explosion, a major oxygenation event occurred between 850 to 541 million years ago. This event ultimately supplied sufficient oxygen to enable the evolution of larger and more complex life forms. Around 580 million years ago, in a global event known as the Gas Gears Glaciation, Earth's climate became very cold, and vast sheets of ice covered much of the planet. The melting of these ice sheets, coupled with a very long phase of intense continental weathering and erosion of land areas, delivered large amounts of sediments to the seas and oceans. This resulted in an increase in the amount of phosphorus and other vital nutrients in the ocean basins. This rise in available nutrients ignited an increase of photosynthetic marine organisms, which further amplified the amount of oxygen in the oceans. Ediacaran communities were located on the seafloor. The organisms themselves exhibited a diverse range of body plans, from frond and bag-like forms to bilateral, discoidal, and even an unusual triradial form seen in the creature Tribrachidium. It has proven very difficult to determine which specific groups many of these Ediacaran organisms represent. Most Ediacaran organisms appear to have not been able to move. They also lacked mouths. The sea floor was apparently a much more peaceful place during this time. For this reason, it is sometimes referred to as the Garden of Ediacara. The microbial mats that covered the Ediacaran seafloor are thought to have provided a source of nutrition for some of these strange organisms who may have grazed them. The mats also separated the underlying seafloor sediments from the water above and covered the landscape in slime. With no organisms filtering nutrients from the water, the ocean was murky with detritus. Dickinsonia, an Ediacaran creature with no head and an unusual offset symmetry, could grow quite large reaching sizes of up to one meter across. Dickinsonia is believed to have spent much of its life anchored to the sediment. Another Ediacaran, Kimberella, was most likely a primitive mollusk-like animal. This creature is believed to have been able to move across the seafloor, indicated by grazing traces left in the sediment. This evidence shows not all Ediacaran animals were confined to one place on the seafloor and some were mobile. One of the largest Ediacarans was Charnia. This organism is an example of a frond-like form. It consisted of a flat leafy body attached to a disc-shaped holdfast, which anchored it to the seafloor. Despite its appearance, we know it was not a plant because it lived in the deep water, well below the photic zone. Towards the very end of the Ediacaran and entering the seceding Cambrian time period, 550 to 530 million years ago, sea level rose due to the splitting apart of an ancient supercontinent called Rodinia. This expanded viable habitats in the marine realm and encouraged blooms of plankton, 
whose abundance favored the development of a wide range of organisms. 539 million years ago, the largest biodiversification event in Earth's geological history took place. This is known as the Cambrian Explosion. This may have been sparked by the warming climate, increase in oxygen, and rising sea levels, which flooded areas of land, creating shallow marine environments perfect for the evolution of new life. Here we see for the first time all of the modern animal groups we know today. Cambrian animals were different from previous forms in several ways. Animals began to exhibit more clearly defined bilateral symmetry. This means they were now divisible into two equal halves. The development of a clearly defined head region meant that locomotion could now be much more efficient. Animals began to burrow and penetrate down into seafloor sediments during the Cambrian. The Scalidophora are a group of primitive marine worm-like organisms that lacked a true body cavity. They are believed to have burrowed into the sediment, aiding the creation of a more oxic environment. Predators were first seen in the early Cambrian, where adaptation and counter-adaptation occurred. Many organisms were forced to find evolutionary pathways to avoid predation. Some evolved hard mineralized shells and body armor in order to protect themselves. During this time, an evolutionary arms race between predator and prey began. Trilobites first appeared during the Cambrian, a product of this increasingly heightened evolutionary arms race. Trilobites represent some of the earliest known arthropods, a group that includes crustaceans, insects, and spiders today. Their flattened segmented bodies, tough calcareous exterior, and armored crystalline eyes provide extra protection from the increasing number of predators on Cambrian seafloors. Anomalocaris was a bizarre denizen of the Cambrian seas. It had a segmented body with no legs and has proven difficult to classify. It had a streamlined body, wide swim flaps, and a large fan tail, suggesting it was a strong swimmer. At around one meter in length, it was the largest animal on Earth at the time. It was an apex predator of its time. It had prominent compound eyes and two large rasping anterior appendages, which fed struggling prey into a gaping circular mouth. We have seen the change from the cyanobacteria and microbial mats that dominated the early oceans to the peaceful inhabitants of the Garden of Mediacara to the dawn and evolution of the modern animal groups we know today. Seascapes will never stop evolving or developing. Whether it be in their chemical makeup, physical form, or the many remarkable forms of life they support.